Bless you, everyone that is watching right now. We are so happy. Apostle John Lafitte, Letty Lafitte, they're my spiritual sons here. If you're watching right now, we're going to bring something very powerful on what the Spirit of God is saying, what is happening, why it's happening. And we're going to have what we call a prophetic update. Mm -hmm. For the people that don't know where we are, the Bible says the world doesn't know what times we live. Mm -hmm. The world is, is lost. Yes. yes. So they know what is happening because as apostles and prophets, we need to announce. We need to warn people. Mm -hmm. We need to tell the people. We need to be the trumpet of God. Yes. For those, those people that they're blind, they don't know what is happening. So because of the mercy of God, we have received a light of the times we're living in. What kind of times we are living in? Prophet Letty, can you, can you share? Apostle, thank you for having us. Yeah. Uh, it is a time to really sound the trumpet to the church and also to people in general, unbelievers, because we are living times that are unprecedented. We have heard through the scriptures that we were going to see things like this. But still, when we come to see what's going on in the world today, it's still surprising to us, even though the, the Bible has been warning us, you know, and we see like never before the spirits that are moving all over the earth and over the countries and people's lives. We see the spirit of deceit like we have never seen before. I don't know, but I see that in the last few years, there has been an increment of this. After the 2020 pandemic, we have seen something happen all over the world, different nations. We are seeing people speak untruths or lies and pass it as truths and people being deceived to a, a, a way that we have never seen before. We are seeing people being deceived so to, to, to live independently from God. We are seeing, like you were saying before, the character of the people being tested. We see the worst of humanity, people that want to make up their own principles and discarding the principles of the Word of God. So what we're seeing is that we are living in times that we need more than ever to know God, to know the Word of God, because people are being deceived. Amen. We're going to read something here, the book of Haggai. And we're going to start with the agenda of God for the times we're living in. And this is what the Bible calls the fullness of time, which the Bible talks about the cycle, the end time cycle of God. In other words, we are living in the end time cycle of the end time cycle. It's the end. There's no another cycle. This is the end time cycle according to the Bible. And of course, to be founded in the word, we're going to share, and this is what God started in 2020. God spoke to me and the Lord said, there's a new cycle. There's the end time cycle that will start with the, with the COVID, with the pandemic. So the Bible says, the book of Haggai chapter 2 verse uh, 7, Thus says the Lord, in a little while I will shake the heavens, the earth, the sea, and the dry land. I will shake the nations, the desire of all nations, and it shall come to the house of God. And then this is what he says, the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. This end time cycle, the end time cycle of God starts with uh, a shaking. Two, we're going to see revival and we already seeing it. Mm -hmm. We as a ministry, we have seen revival 1.0, but now we enter in and that revival 2.0. And then we're going to see the end time harvest of soul. Mm -hmm. So which is something that we never seen before. And fourth is what the book of Haggai says, the glory of the latter house will be greater than, in other words, we're going to see the glory of God. Yeah. It's going to be the former and the latter together. It's going to be a greater glory. So that's one of the reasons we call Cap face-to-face -face encounter with the glory of God, because we are living in the end time cycle of God and this end time cycle, see what the Spirit is saying, we need to announce that there is a glory coming. There's a shaking that we are in now. Mm -hmm. There's a revival coming. There is a glory. There's an end time harvest that mm -hmm. is coming. So this, we live in, in a, such a beautiful time for the church. Yes. For the world, it's going to be tough. Mm -hmm. But for the church, it's going to be awesome. Mm -hmm. So we live in, in a time of pruning, cleansing, 
We live in a time where God is dealing with the hearts, yes. dealing with character. Mm -hmm. I think God spoke to me and God said, I'm systematically mm -hmm. removing the wheat and the tares. Yes. There's a separation right now that we're seeing who's the wheat and who's the tares. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So we are seeing who's the good, who's the evil. We are seeing who are the true remnant people of God. Mm -hmm. So we in end time cycle, we see shaking, we see revival, we see harvest of souls, we see glory, and everything that it happened is because Jesus is coming soon. Yeah. Amen. Oh my God, Jesus is coming Amen. soon. That is the most important. This is the reason we're going to see all the things happen. Apostle John, so tell me about this end time cycle. People can imagine mm -hmm. uh, a shaking in the world. Mm -hmm. And uh, now something is, is shaking and you're a scientist. So tell me about this uh, artificial intelligence. How does it have to do? What about UFO? Mm -hmm. What about those things? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to get you in trouble. but All of these things are, are really interesting because they are all connected to the end time. And it's so important what you were saying in this prophetic update uh -huh. is because people might read a prophecy in the Bible, but not know that it's for them at that time. Ah, there you go. As a matter of fact, most of the people didn't exactly. know it was for them. Exactly. Okay. <laughs> so the Apostle Peter was saying that the prophets were speaking about things that, that they weren't going to experience, but it was for us. Uh -huh. That was at the time of the Messiah when Jesus first came. Well, this is also written, and that's why God wants a prophetic update for people to know that these are the times yes. that was written by the prophet. Even though it was 2,000 years ago, even though all of this, we are living in these times. And there are things happening now that have never happened, particularly all the signs that it has been talking about. You just talked about artificial intelligence. Come on, come on, John. <laughs> artificial intelligence is very interesting because it's artificial. First of all, let's begin with that. And what it does is the way it works is it that you get a collection. You don't just tell the computer what to say. So, for example, you can say hello. You can program a computer. It'll say hello back. But the artificial intelligence, what you feed it is information. When you say hello, what do people say? And then it'll answer back according to that. So that means that if you feed truth to the artificial intelligence, it will repeat truth. But if you feed error, deception, misconceptions... It will bring back that. So we are at a time, part of the end times is deception. And that's what part of the, the, the plan of the enemy of the kingdom of darkness is to blind the people, deceive the people into following it. That is why the people of God need to know the times that we're in and they need to be in God. That's why there is this division that you're seeing that the bride is being cleansed. Yes, there yes. is an exposure of who is not the bride. In fact, the, we are living in a time where most major denominations in the United States have split. And there has been a division showing who is a bride, who stands with biblical truth, and who will go ahead with whatever the culture says and continue. So these things are happening. When the Internet came as a new technology, it was found and studies have been made that show that lies go further, deeper, wider throughout the Internet than the truth. So while the, the social media internet could be an instrument for truth, it's going to be used for deception. And this is why it's so important that we really listen to the people of God that have the word of God, not just somebody who says, oh, I'm a pastor, or, you know, I got a mail order degree and says something and it's not even biblical. That's why even the people of God should get into the word of God themselves because of deception going about. You should have your Bible. You should know your Bible. You should study your Bible. You should study the Word of God. But it's not just to study it. You have to have a personal relationship with God because there's two components to knowing God, the Spirit and the Word. So artificial intelligence is a source of potential multiplication in deception. Oof. And the thing is, you can wow. control people not by forcing them, but if you make them have a, a thought, a mindset, a pattern, you can change their way of thinking. People can depart from the faith. And in fact, that's what First Timothy chapter 4 says, verse 1, that in the end times, people will depart from the faith. Uh -huh. They will hear doctrines of demons, they will hear lying spirits, and that people will also want to hear people to tell them what they want to hear. Uh -huh. So artificial intelligence, while it can be used for good, 
it also can be used to spread deception. And of course, in the end times, all technology, whether it's moral, it's not necessarily immoral, it can be used for good, but it can be used also for evil. And of course, the Antichrist spirit will use it for evil. Okay, tell the, for those people that are watching, what is artificial intelligence? Mm. You just said the purpose yes. of it, yes. but what is it for those people that don't? Yes. Apostle John has the authority to do it. He's a scientist, so, so he knows he can say it. Yeah. So artificial intelligence is a new way of, of programming a computer in the sense that what you do is you train it with information. Let's say that you want to have a camera recognize a cat as opposed to a, a dog, an elephant, or whatever. So you show it all these pictures of cats. So it then in a way that you don't tell it exactly what to look for, it figures out for itself rules as to what is a cat. And so then when you show it a picture of a cat, it says, well, cats have pointy ears because it's seen a lot of pictures of cats. And so it comes up to these conclusions. So nobody knows exactly how it comes up into these conclusions, but you just feed it enough information and you correct it. You tell them this is right, this is wrong. So it identifies a dog as a cat, then you tell it, no, that's wrong. So then it knows it needs to refine it, its way of thinking. So it's not a human being telling it, it's just showing it a lot of data. And then it comes up with a system or it categorizes in such a way that it figures out what it will call a cat with humans correcting it along the way. That's what's supposed to happen. But you know, there have been even uh, one of the first developments of artificial intelligence was to help scholars to find research papers or to write things. And they have even found that it invented papers. See, there, there's no morality to it. So it can cross the boundaries. A human being, because being made in the image of God, there's a sense of right and wrong. Of and with an artificial intelligence, you eliminate those things. You eliminate what are barriers, things that even restrain people from evil, people from doing bad things. Let me give you a recent experiment. There was a recent experiment where they would they told an artificial intelligence, you have a target that you have to destroy. But what the way that they did it is you have to notify a human operator. Uh, and the human operator is the one that finally says, yes, destroy the target. So the human operator would say, no, don't destroy the target. So the artificial intelligence decided, I need to get rid of the guy. I need to destroy the guy because he's keeping me from my target. So then they told him, oh you can't destroy the guy. I mean, it's, it's not more. It's just coming up. I have to do my mission. So then they told him, no, you're not allowed to kill the guy. So he said, okay. So then what the artificial intelligence did was destroy the tower that sent the command to it that told it not to destroy the target. So see, the, the artificial intelligence is not really intelligent. It's just following things. It's certainly not moral. It doesn't have the human component. And one thing is that people will be confused because it will seem real. I mean, if, if right now it's impressive, you can imagine in 20 years, it'll be much more impressive. It will never be real. In other words, it won't have real creativity. Those things are characteristics God gave to human beings in his image and likeness. Wow. <laughs> wow. That's powerful. You know, there's a lot of people talking about artificial intelligence. We're talking about what the Spirit of God is saying. Yes. What the, where are we going? What is happening and why it's happening? Yes. And I'm going to come back to you with the UFO. Yes. Which is unidentified flying object. Yes. That's what it means. Yes. What do they call it? Another name for that? They've been... Through time, they've been changing names, but uh, the traditional name was UFO. Yeah, it's the one that sticks go, with us. We're going to go in a minute. Okay, why in the times we're living in, the supernatural is needed? Tell the people that are watching or will share with us, what is the supernatural? And because people thinking the supernatural is something magic. Yes. You do this in magic. Okay. Uh, you want for money and money appears. Yeah. <laughs> What is supernatural? The supernatural that we are talking about is the the supernatural of God, uh -huh. because there is also demonic supernatural. But we're talking about something that goes above the laws of nature and above every other law, which is the law of God, the supernatural, the all powerful God that can make anything happen. It doesn't matter the circumstances. Mm -hmm. That's what we're talking about. And it is so needed for people. People sometimes know of God, but they have never experienced the Can supernatural a God. Without the supernatural, the time. absolutely not. Why not? 
Absolutely not, because then we will be living in the natural only. What will a pastor do if a member of the church comes and says, I went to the doctor, the doctor said that there's nothing more to do for me. And the, if the pastor will only be in the natural, will say, God bless you, go home and die. But if we know the power of God, we know the supernatural God, and we know that in that case, the pastor will say, God can heal you. He is supernatural. The power of God can heal you. Pray for that person. The person will receive the healing. And then the person will have a testimony of that supernatural. Give me a God. testimony that is supernatural and people you know in your life. Well, I've known a lot of people being sick. I mean, the same story that I'm saying. I know people that have been sick with cancer in one cap. I remember this testimony. It was one of the most powerful testimonies that I had the honor to present to the people. There was a woman that came to cap and she had had her breasts removed. She's still in our church. She had her breasts removed because of breast cancer. She came to that cap and in that cap, her breasts were formed and she came to the front. She gave her testimony, black hair. I remember, I remember. her and she, she was going like this, touching herself and saying, I came here believing that God was going to do a miracle in my body. And that uh, she was still uh, away from chemotherapy. And that day she was completely restored. She's alive today. She's serving God I hear God. in church. That is the supernatural God that we're talking about. Okay. I believe Apostle John and, and Prophet Letty that the times we live in, in the supernatural is so needed because it would be impossible to supply human needs, mm -hmm. and, you know, in the natural. Mm -hmm. Like you were saying, how can you supply if we go into a recession or financial crisis? We have to depend on God. Yes. Yeah, we have to live on the economy, the supernatural mm -hmm. yeah. economy of God. Yeah. So there's so many things that people are watching and thinking, you know, this is the reason we have called this cap. Mm -hmm. For those that don't know what cap is, cap is an apostolic and prophetic conference that we do for the last 15, 20 years. And all the nations of the earth, over 100 nations, come, and they come and there's the atmosphere is electric, miracles, healing, and people having encounters mm -hmm. with the presence. Yes. Yeah. We are the result. Yes. Yeah. Uh, we are the result. I remember one time the fire got fell. Mm -hmm. And when that fell, I smell the, uh, the burning of flesh, yes. smoke, and it was like, wow. Another time when Jesus came into the arena, when the Lord said, I'm going to come into this arena and the Lord entered in that arena, the presence fell. Mm -hmm. It was such a power. Mm -hmm. So we call it, and the presence of God is supernatural. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's above and beyond reason, above and beyond the natures of law, above and beyond science, mm -hmm. yeah. above and beyond what you can imagine. So you come to this cap. There's information over there. You can go. And you can come and you will see this powerful, not event, but it's a movement. Yeah. It's a movement of the supernatural miracles, healing, deliverance, prophecy for the nation. And those that come in person and they say, I want an encounter with God. Yeah. So they had an encounter with God. So you can register and it's going to be very powerful. Yeah. John, among all those people right now that are watching, there's a lot of weird things that are happening. Yes, sir. A lot of weird yes. things. A deception. Yes. Now we see this artificial intelligence. Yes. What about this UFO? Yes. What is happening? Coming into prophetically update. Yeah. What is happening? We can say so many things. Yeah. And we can bring solutions mm -hmm. like the supernatural. Yes. Now we're going to go back with the presence and the glory. Yes. Okay, John, but tell me about that. Well, this is actually very connected to these end times. Because the Bible says that Jesus is going to come for his church. And suddenly what is going to happen, what is called the, the taking up, the, the rapture is what we use, the rapture of the church. When the rapture of the church comes, you will find that on earth, millions of people will disappear. Come on. Children will disappear. Those that are very young children will mm -hmm. disappear. Christians throughout the world will disappear. And there really will be no answer as to the question, what happened to these people? Mm. The most likely explanation that someone would receive or believe is that they have been abducted by aliens, that their aliens have come and that they have taken these people 
And one of the things that happens is whenever people feel like their country or whatever is invaded, it brings unity. So what will it do? It will make nations look to each other. It will make committees of nations come together, which is the stage for the Antichrist who will come with some demonic supernatural and will come with a demonic wisdom and people will hear that lie. So this is actually setting up the stage for people to believe, yes, there are extraterrestrials. Yes, they're going to come. They're preparing because you heard a little bit about it before. But you didn't hear it like you hear it today. You hear it today all the time. Everybody saying we have this, we have that. If you were to ask me, I don't believe they're aliens because God made us and he put us in this universe. The belief in aliens comes from believing that we are here because we evolved out of molecules into humans without God being throughout the process, without being a special creation. But the truth is that the more we discover, the more difficulties we find in the sense that, for example, something like we find that human beings, every cell has DNA that is so incredibly complex, so incredibly so we came from amazing it, that it, it random processes couldn't produce it. There's these things that actually science is hitting the wall in many areas and is coming to one conclusion. One example is just the fact that the universe, when it, it came to being suddenly, and at that moment, time came into being. So you have that time, space, all of these things came to being at a moment in time. Before that was absolutely nothing. This is the scientific conclusion now is that there's absolutely nothing. So what put the universe in place had to be something outside of the universe that is immaterial, that is in eternity, out of time, and that has omniscience. Uh, so the uh, whatever you would describe this being, it, it would be God. <laughs> well, the, there would be no other way to describe it. But the UFO and all of this is connected to the end times. It's to move people's thoughts in this area so that it will be plausible to them that the rapture of the church could be explained away as an alien abduction. You know, there's a preacher that came to our church and she had an experience with hell. Mm -hmm. And when she went to uh, hell and heaven, mm -hmm. and she said she went to uh, heaven confirming what the scripture is. It's not something that they have peaks out or something. And she said, the Lord told her one of the reason that this UFO, they're demons. They're not you know, <laughs> aliens, but demons. I remember 2010, the Lord spoke to me and the Lord said, I will shake the heavens and the earth. When I shake and take place, the Lord said, you will see demonic spirit. <laughs> The, the, the spirit dimensional will become so tangible and real that you will see them as men walking on the streets. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to see those kind of spirits. They're persons without body. Mm -hmm. They just have, have a form. Mm -hmm. This is important to say that because when the Lord went to heaven, the Lord said, this is what the enemy will do when I, the rapture take place. Mm -hmm. I will raise my church but the enemy will come up with this idea, those aliens mm. took them from the earth. Yes. And so the stage is being set up right now. Yeah, that's it. That tells us how close we are to that moment. Oh, wow. That's true. <laughs> you know, don't be scared there. Right, right. <laughs> if you're in Christ, this is the beauty of Come it. on. We yeah. see two things happening. Yes. Shaking in the world, but glory of God is come coming. Come on, come on. Okay, how close are we? prophetically, those that are watching. Of course, nobody knows exactly the time because the Bible tells us so. But we, by the signs that we're seeing and by discerning the times that we're living in, we know that we are closer than ever and that our generation mm -hmm. and our children's yes, generation are, are going to be the ones that are going to see the, the coming, coming of, of Christ. Yes. So this is a time not to waste time. This is a time to have discernment of the things that we're talking about here today. Because uh, the spirit of the seed, that's why it has been unleashed all over the world to deceive people. Mm -hmm. So when the time comes, they won't go with Christ. So this is a time for the church to be more active. Rise up. And, and people to have discernment of the times that we're living in. Not, not a time to be afraid. A lot of the young people hear this type of things and they become afraid. But this is not a time to become afraid because we are the remnant of God. Yes. We are going to see yes. that all of the things that we, you're saying. Yeah. We're going to see the revival. We're going to see the second com the, the coming of Christ. Mm -hmm. We're going to see 
this end time shaking, which is taking place right now, mm -hmm. we are seeing the harvest of souls, yes. revival, miracle signs, wonders, and the manifestation of the end time glory of God. All this is the preparation because Jesus is not coming for a church full of faith, a church that is patient. Jesus is coming for a glorious church. Mm -hmm. All those things are part of the glory, yes. but Jesus is coming for a glorious church. Yes manifesting yeah. miracles, healing, yeah. the nature of God, yeah. the character of God, the image and likeness yeah. of Jesus Christ. So this is exciting. This is the we fullness. Are, yeah. This is the fullness, the you fullness of everything. Yeah. And you know what? I think there's a lot of people, you know, trying to say that that's the reason we have done CAP. Mm -hmm. And we have called it face-to-face -face encounter with the present. Mm -hmm. There is a face-to-face -face encounter. Is it possible today? It is absolutely possible. Millions of people will speak of their encounters. I could speak of my encounter. Uh, the Bible is full of people that have encountered God. And if we see the Old Testament showing that in that old glory that people had encounters with God, how much more now yes. that we have the Spirit of God dwelling in us. But it's important to go to a place where there is an atmosphere, there's an environment, there's a preaching for the anointing of God, corporate anointing to come upon a person. So I would say somebody who says, you know, I am hungry to have an experience with God. You know, just going at the beach out there and swimming is not the place. You come into a place where there's a worship of God, a whole people coming together with hunger for God. First thing you need to have is hunger. You know, we, we ought to pray every day. Lord, I want an encounter with you. Uh -huh. And it's, if we draw nigh to him, he will draw nigh to us. So there's a lot of things happening. So prepared if you want to register for CAP. Our apostolic and prophetic conference, more than 100 nations, are coming to Miami from everywhere. You will see black, white, Asians, Oriental, Hispanic, men, women, adults, young, all kinds of people. So I want you to be part of this face-to-face -face encounter with his presence. It's going to be awesome. So I want you to come. We need the supernatural. Yeah. We need the power of God. Yeah. We need the glory of God. We need an encounter to be transformed forever. You can register kingjesusministry.org. You can go You can go to cap.org. So I love you very much. And we're going to pray for you, those that are watching. I know that many of you are saying, well, I've been hearing the UFO. I'm scared now. <laughs> We're going to pray for you. I know I always like to minister to the people on the camera, people that are watching. There is a woman that is watching me. Uh, you didn't go to work today. Somehow it happened. You got some cysts in your breast. And right now, in this moment, those cysts are disappearing in the name of Jesus. Right now, be totally healed right now. I see someone with a valve. God is replacing a new valve in your heart. Be healed in Jesus' name. I see also uh, asthma, especially young person, nine years old. I see that you have asthma. you be able to sleep even last night and you couldn't sleep. So be healed in Jesus' name. I rebuke every sickness, every disease. Come out of those bodies and be healed in Jesus' yes. name. Word for, for the people over there. The word for the people, if you're going to do one thing after hearing us today, is to go and get yourself closer to God. Find God in your life. Uh, look for the scripture so you can get to know God. This is the time for the people of God to be strengthened in their faith and also the people that don't know God to get to know God, to get closer to God. It is the only answer for the times that we're living in. So I want to pray for you right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, reach those peoples, Lord, that are, that are crying out to you right now, that they have no hope, that they are depressed, yes. that they have, they don't see a future right now in the name of Jesus. Yes, the hand of God is being extended to you right now for salvation, for restoration. Right now in the name of Jesus, we come against every spirit of deceit that has been speaking lies to your head, lies to your, to your life. And in the name of Jesus, be free right now of every human opinion and receive the truth of God that is Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 John, give some words of knowledge to those people that are watching that need help. Yes. There's a person that you've been watching this and on your left ear, you're deaf. 
in the name of Come Jesus. On. I declare that ear yes. to be open now in Jesus' name. There's also someone that they have a problem with their right knee and, and you've been limping from that knee. Yes. In Jesus' name, I declare you be free and delivered now. There are people also who there's a spirit of confusion in them. You say, I don't know what to believe. Yes. I am confused. I hear this. I hear that. Well, there's a spirit of confusion that is operating. And in the name of Jesus, we take authority yes, over Lord. every demonic spirit of confusion and command yes. it to let you go. Let your yes, land go Lord. right now in Jesus' name. Father, open the eyes. Remove every blindness that the enemy has put in that they might hear the truth. Father, those that are of the truth, your truth will open their eyes, open their spiritual ears, that they might know the truth and walk in it. In Jesus' name, amen. If you're watching, if you've never given your life to Jesus, if you say, I feel lonely, I feel sad, I need help, I want you to repeat this prayer with me. Say with me, Father God, I recognize that I am a sinner. I repent of all my sins. I confess with my mouth, say it out loud, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. And I believe with all my heart, that God the Father raised Jesus from the dead. Amen. If you've done this prayer, give us a call and let us know that you gave your life to Jesus. I have a book called End Time Shaken and Revived. And this is something important. Uh, this book will tell you exactly what we've been sharing here, what times we're living in, the moral corruption, God purpose of shaking, uh, what is revival, how that revival will look like, what a revived church will look like. So I want you to get this book. You can go to Amazon. You can go anywhere, a bookstore, and get this end time shake and end revival. And second, uh, I want to take this time to invite you for CAP, and our apostolic and prophetic conference that we were talking about this more the spirit. Uh, and I know only about one minute, uh, Apostle John, give me in 15 seconds. What has been most impacting that you've seen in CAP? Well, the most impactful is the people getting that fire of God, getting that presence of God, crying out for God because the presence of God came. And so they were so touched. And this is something that is accessible to all of us who hunger for God. Yeah, you can go to kingjesusministry.org. Give us a call. Let us know. And want you to be part of this powerful event. But above everything else, look for God. One second, 10 seconds were for them. To seek God. I'm, I'm going back to that again. Lo the Lord is wanting you. You need to come close to him. It is the only answer for the world at the time that we're living in. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much. Thank you, Boss. Thank John. you, Lord. Thank you, Brother Letty. We love you very much. Le amamos mucho en Spanish. I love you. <laughs> I love you so much. And I'll see you next.